This is the story of Surpur, a tiny place in Gulbarga, hidden in a remote corner of Karnataka. Surpur, a place of mystery, a place of forgotten glory, of lost legends. Surpur, home to the Vedanayakas, the hunter kings, descendants of Valmiki and Ekalavya. Who were these hunters who would be kings? Where did they come from? And where have they vanished? Their origin is as steeped in mystery as their story itself. Munirabad, Kampli, Ratnagiri, Mudgal, some of the names which scholars and historians propose. But what of the people of Surpur themselves? What have they to say? Vijayanagara Samrajya, Rajya Radha, Pravdadeva Rayaru, Parasappa, Nayakara Kaladalli, Vijayanagar the Patana the Nantara, Andre Hadne Nurda, Arvat Nalkara, Rakas Tangadi Kalagada, Idha the Nantara, Hindu Samraja the Patanaitu, Alinda, Vijayanagar Samraja the Lidanta, Sardaru, Mandlikru, Aurela, Bere Berekadela Hope, Asama the Lee, Mula Purchanadanta, Surpur Sonstana, the Mula Purchar Kuda, Kakera the Samipa, Idanta, Gadi and the Inherit, Agadi Hatrabandu, Tama. It all began when Ibrahim Adil Shah, the Sultan of Bijapur, perceived a threat to his supremacy. An ambitious chieftain from Kakera was slowly encroaching upon his territory. The Sultan devised a scheme to get rid of the threat and threw a challenge. Face a wild elephant without any weapon. The scheme backfired. The young chieftain, Gaddi Piddanaika, overpowered the tusker in a public arena and walked away with an award of 9 lakh rupees, enough money to establish a small kingdom. Thus was born the legend of Surpur. It was not long before the Mughals came calling. It was the reign of Hasarangi Pamanayaka, the next king. 
Dilir Khan, Aurangzeb's commander-in-chief, who had defeated the great Shivaji himself, attacked the forts of Shapur and Gogi with a mighty army. operation proved a disaster and the trans general in true Mughal tradition pillaged and ravaged the surrounding villages with the imperial cavalry. Tarbiyat Khan, Chinkulich Khan, Nazrat Chang, Dalpat Rao, Raja Rambaksh, a succession of mighty Mughal generals, came, attacked and failed. Meanwhile, power passed from Hasrangi Pamanayaka to Pitambara Bahiri Piddanayaka. AD 1705 Following the string of humiliating defeats of his generals, Aurangzeb himself finally descended on the fort of Vaginagera, the then capital of Surpur. And here it was that the saga of Surpur reached the pinnacle of its glory when a Mughal emperor was forced to submit to a local ruler. After six long months of scheming, strategizing and siege with a million strong army, Aurangzeb failed to breach the defense of Pitambara Bahiri Piddanaya. Smitten by this severe blow to his supremacy, the emperor vented his fury on the surrounding villages, defiling and devastating them with their vengeance. The ruins of the temple of Gopalaswami, the royal deity, bear witness to this wanton destruction even today. Toward the end of the war, an extraordinarily mysterious thing happened. An episode unparalleled in the annals of history. A riddle unsolved to this day when at long last Aurangzeb did enter the fort. What he saw stupefied him. The whole fort had been deserted in a single night. There was not a sign of life, not a soul to greet him, not even a cat. Where had everyone vanished? The king, along with his subjects, had migrated en masse to Surpur, a place better protected by nature from invaders. Surpur Dinda Uttarake Vandurga Kote and No Katalaitu. 
ದಟ್ಟ ಅಡವಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಮಧ್ಯ ತಗ್ಗು ಪ್ರದೇಶದಲ್ಲಿ ಶತ್ರುಗಳ ಕಣ್ಣಿಗೆ ದಕ್ಕನೆ ಗೋಚರಿಸಿದಂತೆ ತುಂಬ ಆಯಾಕಟ್ಟಿನ ಸ್ಥಳದಲ್ಲಿ ವನದಲ್ಲಿ ದುರ್ಗ ಕಾನನದಲ್ಲಿ ಕೋಟೆ ಕಟ್ಟಿದ ಕಾರಣ ಈ ಊರಿಗೆ ಒಂದುರ್ಗ ಎಂದೇ ಹೆಸರಾಯಿತು to this day retains one of the last relics of the dying Mughal empire a letter of friendship sent by Aurangzeb as a compromise to Pitambara Naika another invader this time Europeans it was now their turn to taste the might of a hunter king the iron hand of mondagai venkata panayaka the nizam of hyderabad had failed to penetrate the pondicherry fort in spite of months of effort in alliance with the british forces desperation led him to mondagai nayaka who after refusing any support mounted an intense offensive on the fort one thousand camouflaged commandos formed a human bridge across the moat over which the rest of the nayaka's army stormed the fort a fierce battle followed and the fort was seized in a single day this feat of military strategy stands apart in history to this day
religion thrived under Devendra Venkata Panayaka. Another time, another hero. But no, this was neither a hunter nor a king, but a hero nevertheless in the eyes of the people. Colonel Meadows Taylor, the British representative at Surpur and the mentor of the last hero of our story, Raja Venkata Panayaka. It was the time of the first war of Indian independence. The spirit of patriotism was at its peak and the Raja was the chief of the Southern Command of the Liberation Forces. The man leading the British forces, Captain George Newberry of the Madras Cavalry, was killed in action by the Raja's forces. Newberry's tomb stands as eloquent testimony to this historical event. February Captain Newbury Madras Cavalry Captain Illi Marana Hondida Surpur ಸೈನಿಕರು Madras Cavalry, aged 37 years, killed in action before Shorapur, February 8, 1858. Tumba Ashtar and Jana Ivat, Kerthare, Agilila, British Sari Horatane Madilla, Antaliki Inta on the Jivanta Saki, India of the Beku, and Yudhazalene, Captain Newbury, Ile, Marana Hundidane. seems to be the motive on which Surpur's history is built. Raja Venkata Panayaka was betrayed to the British by the Nizam of Hyderabad. While being escorted to his place of exile by the British, the Raja was found dead with a bullet in his stomach. 